Hey, it's Jen Vax with your colorstyle.com, and this is part three of a three part series all about the characteristics of color. Today, we're talking about the temperature of a color, so whether it's cool or whether it's warm, or maybe it's a little neutral. And this is important because it depends on your undertones, which colors are going to be most flattering. So in part one, we talked about chroma, whether the color is bright or soft. Part two, we talked about depth, whether it's light or dark. And today we're talking about temperature, whether it's warm or cool. Now, if you can pull, find a color that is, matches your color type for all three characteristics, then it's a win. It's a hands down win, but you know, that's not always realistic. And when you're shopping and you see a color and it doesn't exactly fit into your color palette, try to match two of those three characteristics. So maybe it's not the right brightness, but it's the right temperature and it's the right depth. You can still make that work pretty well because that's kind of a good enough. But if you get all three, it's sort of like the, the magic bullet, right? So let's talk about temperature because this is, in my opinion, something that's often misunderstood. When you're looking at a color wheel, and we'll, look, we'll talk about your color style color wheels because that's the one that I know. And on the left side of that color wheel are the cool colors. And they range from, at the bottom, um, greens all the way through to magenta pinks. So very, on in between there's blue and purple, right? Go up, going up to magenta pink, and then on the warm side of the color wheel, we have warm pinks to reds to orange to yellows, and going to kind of green yellows, those like limey greens and spring greens. Okay, before you bridge over into the cool side of the color wheel. Now, I will tell you that in color mastery right now, um, which is the new course that just launched we are actually looking at a different color wheel, something that shifts the, shifts the green over to the bottom still of the color wheel, but more over onto the warm side of the color wheel. Now there's no right or wrong here. It's not like suddenly your greens aren't gonna work on you. It's just a different way of looking at color in the lens of pigment and color analysis. So if that interests you, I'm calling it reinventing the color wheel. I really didn't reinvent the color wheel, but I am reinventing the color wheel that we have been using a little bit to make it much more interesting, in my opinion, when it comes to understanding color and color combinations, as well as helping you understand how a color is actually created. Um, especially through printing, because that's the same kind of process that's used for colors for clothing. And really understanding that because it makes all the difference when you're trying to figure out if a color is going to suit you and how to make it work. So that's all over in the Color Mastery program. I'll, as I said before in my other videos, I'll leave a link somewhere where this video is located so you can check it out. But I just wanted to uh, bring that up because it, it just, it, I always get a little kind of dorky and geeky about color and I love talking about that particular color wheel because it's a little bit different. So the green, depending on which one we're talking about, could be warm or cool, but it doesn't really matter because it's kind of a universal color. So let's talk about that too in the in the realm of warm and cool. So let me just finish first. We have the warm colors and we have the cool colors. Now, if you have cool undertones, then you will likely be able to wear all of the colors on the cool side of the color wheel. And if you have warm undertones, you will likely be able to wear all of the colors on the warm side of the color wheel. That doesn't mean that you can't wear cool colors when you have warm undertones, and it doesn't mean that you can't wear warm colors because you have cool undertones. That's a misunderstanding I hear all the time. I hear someone with warm undertones say, well, I can wear blue really well, so I must have cool undertones. No, that's not true. There are universal colors all around the spectrum of the color wheel, regardless of which one we're talking about, and that everyone can wear regardless of your undertones. And so they are true red, and that one's tough because 
you can get a red and when you put it next to another red you see that it's got a little blue added to it and it's cooling down or it has a little yellow added to it and it's warming up and it's more of a tomato red so you gotta be really careful with that use your color fan if you can to get the true red match otherwise too warm of a red won't look so good on someone with cool undertones and too cool of a red will look a little off on someone with warm undertones so you want true red true yellow same dissertation here if you want true yellow and again use your color fan if you have it to find true yellow otherwise it'll lean a little bit too green or a little bit too warm and either way it can look a little off depending on what, on, on your undertones because you know you have cool yellows and warm yellows we go deep into color mass into in the color mastery program about that orange surprising can be considered a universal color especially for someone that's bright and cool can't exactly explain it, but it does work really well. So it works well for people who have warm undertones and people who have cool undertones, mostly people who are cool and deep. Cool and light, I don't know, not so much. And you gotta be careful of the right hue of orange. So we're just talking in very general terms here, like peach is not gonna work. We're talking about a certain type of orange that's in the color palettes. And on the other side of the color wheel, on the cool side, we've got green, which is a perfect blend of blue and yellow. Green looks good on everyone, most people. There's an exception. I'll talk about that at the end. Blue is universal. Purple can also be considered universal, but be careful. Again, you don't want too blue of a purple. That's not gonna work well on someone with warm under tones. Um, but I think even red purples will, will work on on cool undertones. So just gotta make sure the, the balance of the blue and red there and that purple. The reason I had said that green does green looks good on everyone, but then I had a but there at the end, an exception. And that is if you have olive skin tone, which has tends to have a little bit of green in your skin, greens may not feel so great on you because you're you're enhancing the green. And that would be the exception to the rule is you know if you have if you feel like you have olive skin tone and green just doesn't work, go with the red. Go with the complement, the color that's opposite the color wheel. Depending on your undertones, any of those pinks, magenta pinks to reds, are going to look amazing because it's going to balance out and neutralize that green. So just a little extra tip there, so I hope you enjoyed that. And this wraps up all three parts of this series on the characteristics of color. I hope you've enjoyed it. I highly recommend that if you love learning about color like this, to join us over in Color Mastery. It's not too late to join us. And I will leave a link for that. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching.